Hello, my name is Patricia Morenci, and this is The Struggle is Really Diverse. This is our ongoing Q&A series in which we explore mental health topics, particularly in regards to diverse and marginalized communities. If you're a member of those communities and would like to submit a question, topic, or suggestion that may be featured in one of our future episodes, feel free to click the link to the survey in our description box below. You can also get access to the survey by following us on Instagram at U of A Caps. All right, let's get started. All right, so for today's episode, we're gonna be focusing on asexuality, the asexuality spectrum to be exact. And this is a follow-up part two in our crossover episode series with the other YouTube playlist, Mental Health Mondays. So Mental Health Mondays, the previous episode, episode 18, we explored the concepts of gender, and orientation, and the connection between those two and overall mental health and wellness, how it impacts groups. So we talked a little bit about the LGBTQ community in general and how even though we use the acronym and variations of the acronym when we're discussing folks in these groups, we really do need to pay attention to the fact that there is a great diversity of individuals in this group and they, that they consist of identities in regards to gender identities and sexual identities and even sex assigned at birth. So if you would like to learn more about those concepts, I highly recommend that you visit our previous video before watching the video for today. So at the end of the video, we touched upon exploring the concept of asexuality. And so this is the focus of today's episode. And we wanna talk about it for many different reasons. One of the main reasons is that asexuality is often considered the invisible orientation. It's one of those orientations that is often not discussed or excluded in the discussions within the LGBTQ community. So it is very important to explore what asexuality means because a lot of people have a misunderstanding as to what asexuality is, what it consists of, or even the fact that it exists on a spectrum. Not a lot of people know that. So we're definitely gonna take a deeper look into that and we're gonna be discussing the connections between that and mental health. And we really do wanna underscore the importance of, just like we talked about the other gender and sexual identities within the LGBTQ spectrum, is really important to have the discussions to normalize it and to make it more visible. There are millions upon millions of asexual or aspec folks around the world. And so it's important to have these conversations to normalize it and to make it more visible because Folks just like us that have same mental health issues along with other types of issues in their lives. And it's important for us to have a better understanding so that we can be supportive of that. Also, it's important to have this discussion for those of you who are exploring your identity and may relate to some of the concepts that I talk about in this video. And if that's true, maybe the ACE label applies to you. And it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to choose to be with that label or labels aren't a thing for you. Totally up to you. And it's more about how you feel comfortable expressing yourself. So let's dig into asexuality, the asexual spectrum. All right. So before we kind of talk about the many different identities that fall within the asexuality spectrum or aspec, it's important to touch upon the research in regards to asexuals and their mental health issues. What's really unfortunate is that there is very little research that is focused specifically on ace individuals within the LGBTQ community. Usually it is studied within the larger context of the LGBTQ community. 
But there was one study recently done by the Trevor Project that focused specifically on ACE individuals. And they used that information from their study, their 2020 study of the LGBTQ population. They look specifically on youth. And so I just wanna highlight a couple of their findings. And in their sample, they found over 40,000 LGBTQ youth and about 10% of those identified as asexual or on the A spectrum. What's really interesting in comparison to other folks, in comparison to other folks in the LGBTQ community, ACE individuals did report higher rates of depression and anxiety compared to those folks, uh, other folks in other identities within the LGBTQ community. And one uh, other major point of note is that it seems that a larger portion of individuals within the ACE spec community I did also identified as transgender and non-binary. So just like in our other videos, when we explore the spectrum of microaggressions and different types of experiences, oppressive experiences within the LGBTQ community, we see once again another distinction where within this umbrella, ACE individuals tend to have a little different terms of demographics and characteristics compared to the overall LGBTQ community. And because we notice in this study that they have higher rates of anxiety and depression is once again important for us to have a discussion about normalizing and making their identities more visible by having these discussions about it. So let's jump in and continue our conversation where we pick up and talk about the definition of asexuality, specific identities and terms, and the split attraction model. Let's jump right in. All right, let's talk about asexuality. So asexuality is a specific type of orientation in which a person experiences little or no sexual attraction to other people, or they don't have a desire to be sexual with partners. In other words, a person that's not generally sexually attracted to anyone of any gender. This is a spectrum. And I think it's one of the orientations that is not often discussed or mentioned when we talk about the LGBTQ community or sexual and gender minorities. Asexuality is a sexual orientation, but in a minute, we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences between sexual orientation and romantic orientation. Now, the thing with asexuality is, as I mentioned, just mentioned, it is on a spectrum, which means that there are folks that experience little sexual attraction, no sexual attraction, or they experience sexual attraction only under specific circumstances. Let's focus on that one particularly. Demisexuality. So demisexuality is within the asexuality framework and it is a particular orientation in which someone feels sexual attraction only with people in which they've established a emotional bond with. Now, whenever we talk about demisexuality or people define this term, it is often misunderstood. And by those who are allosexual, allosexual meaning people that have sexual attraction, like heterosexual, pansexual, lesbian, gay, et cetera, folks who are allosexual tend to misunderstand the particular concept of experiencing sexual attraction only when they form an emotional bond. Not that they don't understand the concept of emotional attachment. In fact, they understand and relate to it so much that they don't understand that there's a stark difference. A lot of times when people talk about demisexuals or demisexuality, allosexuals would tend to say things like, well, yeah, it makes sense. Obviously, if you have an emotional bond, you're gonna end up being more sexually attracted or romantically attracted to someone. And there's a stark difference. Demisexuals are folks that generally do not have sexual attraction to anyone unless they form an emotional bond. And that is not to say that 
any emotional bond triggers sexual attraction. Demisexuals can have many different types of emotional attachments to people, and then certain ones are the ones that trigger this sexual attraction. So before this emotional bond is formed, the person doesn't feel any type of sexual way towards people. And going back to this asexuality framework, some people say that they're asexual, that's all, or they also have the designation of asexual and also their romantic attachment. And we're gonna explain why. So according to the split attraction model, it acknowledges that there are different types of attraction orientation. Now, the ones that we've been going on so far are sexual orientation. And this model is formed specifically within the arrow spec or a spec. We're talking about asexuality spectrum or arrow spec, which we're going to learn in a second. Arrow means aromantic. But within the ace community, it is a model that's often talked about because while these folks do not experience any sexual attraction or little sexual attraction or attraction under certain circumstances, they do experience romantic attraction. And those romantic attractions can use labels such as gay, lesbian, pansexual. So they can be a pan romantic person who's an asexual, meaning that they experience little to no attraction, where they are romantically attracted to people of all different types of genders. So you'll see that they'll use the same prefixes, but instead for sexuality, instead of saying pansexual, they say pan romantic. We're gonna go a little bit more into that. But just to say that romantic and sexual attraction are two different things, and we see that come up a lot within the ace community because they make that designation. These are folks that have little to no sexual attraction, but they do, for a lot of folks, not all of them, experience romantic attachment. So they have romantic feelings for people, they have the longing, the belonging, the closeness to other people, a romantic sense without the sexual feelings. And then there are those that don't have any romantic feelings. So let's jump into that specifically. What are the different types of affectional or romantic orientation? So just to highlight, I've been saying romantic orientation, but affectional is the same thing. It's the pattern or the gender of the person that they fall in love with or want to partner with. So once again, you'll notice they have the same prefixes, just like sexuality. So biromantic is people that are romantically attracted to both men and women, or gender is not necessarily a factor in their attraction. Heteroromantic is a person that is romantically attracted to members of a different gender. Homoromantic is a person that is attracted to someone of the same gender. And panromantic is someone that romantic attractions are not influenced by the gender identity of a particular individual. Poly. So poly is someone that is attracted romantically to all or many genders or gender expression. Gray romantic. Oh, before I explain gray, gray romantic, let me back it up and talk about gray sexuality. That is also sexual orientation that falls within asexuality. So as I mentioned before, I said that people in the ace community or asexuals have little to no attraction or attraction within certain circumstances. Gray sexuality are those that kind of, they kind of ebb and flow between. So sometimes they have little attraction or no attraction and sometimes they do. And so that's why they call themselves gray sexual. So they are still part of the ace community, but there are times when they experience it sexual attraction, sometimes they're not. This is similar to gray romantic for using the same prefix. So gray are between experiencing aromantic, meaning no romantic attraction and romantic attraction. And so gray romantics exist in between. So it can include a lot of different things. Once again, it's, it's a spectrum within the spectrum. People that don't normally experience it, uh, but do experience it sometimes. They may experience romantic attraction, but enough to act on it or it's not directed towards any specific person to warrant to act on it. Or the romantic attraction is there, but only under specific circumstances. All right, so let's go over some other orientations. So demi-romantic, 
some of the demisexual, except this has to do with romantic orientation, reciprocal. So only feeling romantic attraction when you know the person is attracted to you. But for romantic, experiencing romantic attraction about the desire of reciprocation. Arrow flux. So arrow flux and arrow and aromantic are similar to each other. These fall under the aromantic orientation or the lack of desire of romantic attraction to anyone. So aromantic is that general, is that term feeling. No romantic attraction towards anyone of any gender. An arrow flux is kind of similar to, not exactly, but kind of similar to gray sexuality, where how a romantic a person feels fluctuates. A lot of terms. So let's go over how they intersect. So going over the OBI motto, which is really talking about a different parts of a person. So talking about the person's orientation, their behavior and their identity. And the thing to take away here is, you know, I, I mentioned the intersections of it. We, it's really important to understand that while there are certain factors that may overlap and intersect, when it comes to these three specific concepts, they are independent of one another, meaning that someone's orientation isn't necessarily indicative of the way that they're going to behave sexually or how they identify in terms of their identity. So when I talk about orientation, we are talking about romantic and or sexual orientation. Behaviors, the different types of sexual acts and behaviors that someone engages with and who they engage it with. And identity is the label, the term that they use to describe themselves. So let's put that to work. Let's see how that looks like. So at the end, it's the I, the identity that has the importance that we want to focus on in the individual. Um, as allies, it's important to, to understand it because as we see, there's a situation below for people who are not, who do not have these identities or the same history and experiences. It may be very confusing to understand. So it's very important to understand that even though this person may have some sort of type of orientation, different behavior, and they have a different label, right, that we are not meant to judge. So, so in other words, as we just went over everything, we can have a situation where, for example, a cisgender woman, so cisgender is the person's gender identity, who, who is sexually attracted to men, has had sex with men and women in her lifetime and identifies as asexual. So even though this person has had identity, um, has behaviors, excuse me, of having sex with men and women, this person still identifies as a heterosexual. And that happens, that, that storyline happens to a lot of folks, right? And so it's important for us, especially as allies or people who don't identify with these certain identities to not judge the person based on the behavior. Right, but to actually listen to the person and to understand the person and respect the person, however they label themselves. Like my gender unicorn. So as a final wrap up, I just want to talk about the different elements that we just talked about in this presentation, gender identity and orientation. So we, we went over gender identity, um, talking about, you know, how a person feels about themselves, their sense of selves, and those labels can be many different things. So we have female, woman, girl, male, man, boy, but we also know that they could be transgender, pangender, bigender, agender, etc. Gender expression is a lot of behavior. So if a person um, dresses or behaves in a way that is considered feminine, masculine, butch, femme, et cetera, et cetera. Sex assigned at birth is we're talking about the anatomy. And so when a person is born, they are assigned by a physician, a particular sex. And so that could be male, female, intersex. And then the orientation, they could be physically attracted to or sexually attracted to in this category, different types of genders or a combination of them or none. Same with emotional, or romantic attraction could be one or more genders, a combination or none. 
Yeah, my resources. So if you're interested in learning more um, or getting some resources or support, community supports, these are just a few of them. I list some national ones like Trevor Project, GLBT, Trans Lifeline, and then PFLAG is it's for parents and friends and families of LGBTQ folks. And it's a national organization, but they have different state and local chapters. And so they have one for Northwest Arkansas as well. And there you go. Let's also focus on giving resources to the ACE community. So I had previously listed resources for the general LGBTQ community, but there are some resources specific to ACE spec individuals. And those include, those are in the description below. I have links to all of that and resources that I use and references that I use, but some to just highlight are AVEN Network, asexuality.org, which is kind of the one-stop shop for getting all the information to educate folks on what asexuality is. Plus they have a lot of resources for online resources and meetups in communities for ace individuals to connect and to bond with one another. So take a look at that information below. I also listed in the resources for aspect individuals some youtube videos that really give a firsthand experience to the many different identities and experiences within that so i strongly encourage you to look at that below because you'll see a lot of people ace individuals having these discussions and talking about their lived experiences and you'll see that not one person is the same If you found this information to be helpful, I would like for you to do a couple things. Please first like this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel. And when you're hitting that subscribe button, make sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified for each new episode of our ongoing series. Until next time.